are you saying that, uh, that you would be uh, taking part in uh, our upcoming election in 2024? Well, I'll either, I'll either, I'll either roll an egg or you know, being the, the good, you know, the guy who's pushing them out. Come on, help a, bro <laughs> help a brother out. Make no, some news no, for no, me. No. Well, I, I plan on running now, but we're not prepared to announce it yet. That was President Biden speaking with NBC, saying he plans to run, but still no official word on an announcement on whether he will run for re-election in 2024. Joining us tonight, someone who has announced 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, always great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and President Biden barely can string a sentence together there, let alone run in 2024. What do you think? I think the leadership vacuum in the White House right now is staggering. And that's what's actually weakening America on the global stage. When America fails to lead, that is when Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin and MBS fill that vacuum. And one of the reasons I'm running for president is to take the America first agenda to the next level, grounded not just in grievance or vengeance, but grounded in moral authority and conviction, including leading on the global stage as a member of a new generation. And I think that Biden and, you know, frankly, I would say that Biden's model and generation of governing, it's finally time to go. Yeah. And uh, Kevin O'Leary was just talking about how a deal needs to be brokered with China. Right. You think about this administration and President Biden saying that he'd be so strong on foreign policy is completely failed. He obviously doesn't know how to broker a deal with anybody. But having said that, um, how would you handle the current situation that we're facing with China and all the tension right now? So here's the opportunity we face. China is actually in a vulnerable position. People forget this. Xi Jinping did what autocrats do. He shot China in the foot to hold on to his unprecedented third term of power last October, which he took over. That creates a window of opportunity for the U.S. to actually declare independence from China. Now, I think that you have to, like in any negotiation, be willing to make a sacrifice. So one of the things I've said as president is that I think that we need to be prepared to decouple from China until and unless the CCP reforms its behaviors. But yeah. if we're strong on that, then that actually will, I think, be a catalyst for the CCP to abandon its mercantilist practices, IP theft, data theft, I think this is our window to actually strike economically so that we can defeat them economically such that we never have to militarily. That's going to be my model of governing as president. And this is an administration that's essentially tipping the scales in China's favor, basically offering them opportunity after opportunity and an administration that's using TikTok, which is basically mining our data here in the United States for who knows what kind of purpose later on to, you know, to promote its message. I just want you to listen to this, Vivek. See, this is exactly what leadership looks like. Unlike Republicans, President Biden actually supports democracy. And he's not going to just sit by and watch Republicans do these crazy radical things like expelling Democrats for supporting gun control. Thank you to President Biden and these representatives for standing up for democracy and standing up for America. The irony that the White House is using TikTok to uh, send its message out. So this is the Chinese model to use the Trojan horse, right? Greece would have never defeated Troy militarily. So they use the gift of the Trojan horse instead. That's effectively what China is doing through products like TikTok that addict the American population and then use that to collect data and gain a geopolitical advantage. Unfortunately, the Democratic Party is also addicted to TikTok because it helps them win elections. China understands that. That's why they exploit it. Yeah. And just really quickly, while I have you, George Soros backed DAs across the country, essentially destroying the United States as we know it. Crime is running rampant. Um, having said that, Soros' son visited the White House 14 times since 2021. Your thoughts? This is raw corruption. I think that both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party have railed against corruptions. Both parties need to do better. This is crony capitalism at its worst. You write a lot of checks to the Democratic Party to advance their agenda. Guess what? You get undue influence. Democrats used to be the party to say they wanted to keep money out of politics. They're the party now that has used money to infect politics. I think the Republican Party has a chance to do better, to say that we will not be the party of crony capture. That is why I'm running as an outsider, because I don't think a member of the professional political class can actually liberate itself from the donor class. The Democratic Party is clearly corrupt. I want to lead a Republican Party that's actually better and independent of those corporate interests. Vivek Ramaswamy, you will be back with us shortly um, and we will see you in just a moment for our hot take. Thank you. Meantime, a study blames climate change for 